monitor hypothesis. The second hypothesis that formed a part of Gresham's monitor model was monitor hypothesis. Gresham argued that learning has only one function and this function is to monitor and edit what has been said by the learner or written by the learner. So the point of all learning or the function of all learning is to monitor what has been said or written and how the language has been used by the learner. He argued that learning comes into play only to make changes in the form of our utterance. Otherwise, he believed that whatever language the learners use is the result of the acquisition of the language and not learning of the language. So, learners used language only, uh, learning only to edit or monitor their work. He argued that it was acquisition itself that initiated a speaker's utterances. So, when you watched a learner speaking or writing, that was a result not of learning but of acquisition. And acquisition is what was responsible for the fluency of the second language learner. He also argued that monitor did not operate at all times. In other times, um, the learners were using their language without actually thinking of the errors or the possible errors in their language. And in that case, the monitor was not working. He argued that it is the concept of the monitor that we have in our minds that actually leads to the individual differences in the speaking of a language or using of a language. He said there are different types of individuals. There are people who are monitor overusers. And when the learners or the monitor overusers use a language, they correct themselves so much and every now and then to such an extent that the speech or the writing that they do is uh, affected by it and it becomes stilted or it becomes difficult for them to speak because they are constantly thinking of the accuracy and they uh, can't possibly be focused on being fluent. And then there are people who are monitor under users. So the individuals who are under users of the monitor speak very fluently, write very fluently because they are not thinking of the a correction of what they are saying, but they are focused on delivering the meaning of what they are saying. In that case, there will be error, errors, yes, but they will be more fluent. And then he said there are people who are optimal users and who use it to the right extent in which they do monitor their speech or writing. However, they do not overdo it. The critique is that in a situation where you are hard pressed to use a second language, it's not really easy for a learner to make the monitoring work because the focus is on conveying the meaning and on not on the correction of the language itself. The other thing was that it was very difficult to test what he was actually saying. The problem is when do you decide that the monitor is working? How do you empirically uh, actually test if the monitor is working and when it is not working and what is the result of that? So it is impossible to test the claims empirically and this is a great weakness of this hypothesis.